Well, the 31st annual Explora Vision competition has just wrapped. It's designed to spark inspiration for students in science, technology, engineering, and math, known as STEM. Out of 2,000 submissions, the winner in this year's competition includes a team of eighth graders from Milton, Ontario, for developing fungi fabrics, eco-friendly clothing made from mushrooms. A longtime supporter of the event is Bill Nye, the science guy. He joins us now from Washington, along with teacher Kathy Andreowicz and Milton Middle School student Georgina Angelov. Thank you all so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Uh, Bill, I, I'd love to start with you. I, uh, I grew up watching your original show. You've been up to a lot uh, more since then, though. Um, you have been the spokesperson of this particular competition for, for 20 years now. Why is a competition like this so important in terms of sparking interest in science? Well, any science competition is worthy, uh, and it's a scholarship program. Winners receive <clears throat> bonds for $10,000. Uh, but what's unique about Explorer Vision is it's not for individuals. You have to work in a team. And the idea is to come up with an invention that you think will come into your team, thinks will come into existence in the next 20 years. And it's amazing the ideas that the students come up with. And uh, today we had uh, a guy who won 15 years ago, <laughs> came back and spoke to everybody about what he's doing now. They're really extraordinary kids. You know, when you get out in the workforce, you have to work with people. Absolutely. And this, competition, this competition fosters that. Yeah, no, that's, so, that's great. Uh, and Georgina, uh, you took part in this competition and you and your team ended up being uh, some of the winners. Can you tell us a bit about uh, what you created? So basically, my group and I, we figured out a way to make a more eco-friendly alternative to most clothing and textiles we use today such as like instead of using cotton or polyester we found out a way that we could we figured out a way how we could use fungi basically you we take a spore and we grow it on a dish filled with a substrate and as it grows we can get a sheet out of it and eventually mold it and shape it into whatever we'd like but georgina what made you interested in solving this sort of problem well, after seeing how the environment and pollution has been increasing, my group and I wanted to make it wanted to make something that would benefit the environment and help create a better future for the youth today. Kathy, from from your perspective, watching uh, your students tackle a problem like that, come up with an idea and succeed, what's it been like? It's been really incredible to see how much ownership the three of them took in creating this project. They really worked as a team. They had so many amazing ideas. It was really incredible to have them try to narrow them down. They're all very motivated learners. And so, you know, sometimes they would um, encounter problems with trying to figure out a new way of doing things. And to have this idea bring them all together to contribute and have complete ownership of their learning was really amazing. And Kathy, what is the interest like in, in science, technology, that sort of stuff this day, uh, these days in schools? Is it something that it takes a bit of convincing to get uh, kids into? Well, definitely it is something that takes a little bit of convincing, but at our school we're very lucky to have a program that runs simultaneously with our science, and so students have the opportunity to build prototypes out of wood and cardboard and use hand tools and power tools to create their items, uh, build robots and code them. And so we're hoping that as they get more experience with these items, tools, projects, that they will continue on that STEM path or in the skilled trades in the future. Georgina, what do you think is next for you? Do you have a, another problem that you want to solve or any other sort of uh, you know, area that you want to explore? Uh, to be honest, I still really want to stick with the fungi fabrics idea. So me and my group, we were thinking about taking the next step and figuring out like how we could actually make it in real life and like the fabric and just do some testing, see if we can actually make this a real thing in the next 20 years. What, in the next 20 years? Okay, so the, the, some long-term goals there, turn it into a business, something that you'd actually be able to, to sell? Yeah, something something like that, well, hopefully. That, that's really exciting. Maybe you'll be one of the uh, the winners who returns to the competition like Bill was talking about, uh, you know, 15, 20 years later, uh, showing that fabric off. 
Yes. Bill, I wonder, you know, when you're when you're thinking about getting young people involved in science these days, uh, what do you think uh, really helps to um, bring people in? Is it talking about some of the issues that you're so focused on when it comes to, uh, you know, climate change, say? Well, many, many of the students who compete <clears throat> and many, many of the winners are addressing environmental problems. People who are in school right now are very concerned about the environment, they're concerned about climate change and so on. So what I guess you're seeing is more and more uh, awareness of climate change. And we're here in Washington, D.C., and you can hear it in my voice, the smoke in the air is significant. I've certainly never experienced anything. I grew up here, never experienced anything like it. And it's a result of <clears throat> forests drying out and uh, never actually, it's partially a result of winters not being as cold because the beetles that would uh, in, attack the trees under their pine bark, under the bark, are not getting uh, frozen out mm. during the winter the way they used to. So it, many millions, let's say hundreds of thousands of acres of standing dead trees that we didn't used to have. And so when there's a lightning strike, you get serious problems as we're seeing. But many, many of these student teams are addressing problems like that. And this year there's one that has a whole forest fire idea. Check out the website, explorevision.org. Oh, interesting. Okay, well, we will have to check that out, uh, Bill. I, I wonder, you know, when you're thinking about, I mean, you are a, a science educator and you have been for so long, is there anything more that you think, you know, schools or, or teachers like Kathy say uh, could be doing in order to help students, um, you know, head along that, that STEM path and perhaps pursue careers in those fields? No, no, we're done. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> so we wanna, You're never. We I, wanna, I don't think you'll ever be done, Bill. <laughs> no, so we want to encourage investment in science education. So this means the science teacher, potential science teacher, gets out of school, college. Do you want to take a job at a big software company where they serve you lunch and uh, you have health insurance and so on, or do you want to teach uh, physics? in a public high school. We have to make it worth it. The physics teacher at the public high school has to be made, paid enough money where he or she decides to pursue that instead of uh, private industry. This sounds like common sense, but it's been argued about my whole life. So that's something we can do in order to enable that sort of thinking. You have to vote. People say, what can I do about climate change? What can I do about um, <clears throat> about uh, social injustice or voting rights or whatever it is. It's vote, everybody. Uh, vote for, for people who are going to uh, establish policies that would enable science education. So today, you know, every year at this thing, this is my 20th year, as you pointed out. Yeah. Here at this thing, they asked me to do a little talk. And this year, <clears throat> I pointed out that what, what an extraordinary time this is in history. You know, as the saying goes, if you couldn't pick when you would be born, there's some rule, some science fiction rule, Twilight Zone thing. You couldn't pick when, uh, or rather where you would be born, but you could pick when. This would the time. This would be the time you'd want to be born. This is the most exciting time in human history because of science. We're going to have fusion power someday. We're going to have wind and solar, geothermal. We're going to power the whole world renewably. And this will enable us to raise the standard of living of women and girls. And this will enable us to have more resources for more people. And I remind people in the U.S. Constitution, in the Constitution, there were people here today from the Patent and Trademark Office. Uh, executives from the Patent and Trademark Office, the U.S. Constitution, Article 1, which is the role of Congress, the job of Congress, Article 1, Section 8, Clause 8, refers to the progress of science and useful arts. It's in the Constitution. Mm -hmm. So investment in science education is in everybody's best interest 
Back to you. Bill, well, just lastly, you are in, you're in Washington right now, but you're coming to Canada uh, later this month. You've got a couple of, of live shows, uh, one in Vancouver, uh, one in Calgary. Can you tell us uh, what uh, Canadians can expect? Well, it'll be uh, uh, reminding Canadians to vote also, but it's, we'll talk about climate change. We're talking about the extraordinary things that are happening in fusion power in um, uh, CRISPR. Clustered, uh, uh, CRISPR, CRISPR, regularly interspaced short palindromic gene repeats. We'll talk about that, how we can influence farming and uh, feed more people. And uh, we'll have fun. It'll be fun too.